Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our portal, a design intervention that aims to support people impacted by the criminal legal system. I am Laura Ceron Melo. I use she, her pronouns. I am Colombian. I'm queer. I'm an immigrant in this country. I believe in love and justice. I believe that self-expression and relationships are the most important ingredients for individual and collective healing. And I believe in the saying attributed to many that hurt people hurt people and that heal people heal people. Today, oh, sorry. Today I'm gonna walk um, I'm going to be talking about mass incarceration and reentry, and I will walk you through my journey of building Art Portal. So to begin with, mass incarceration refers to the extreme rates of imprisonment in the U.S. It disproportionately impacts black, indigenous, and people of color living in conditions of poverty. Currently, the correctional system controls over 7 million people. Throughout this presentation, I will use the terms individuals with justice system involvement and individuals impacted by the criminal legal system to refer to the humans directly impacted by this system and by mass incarceration. Now, let's talk about reentry, which is the process of transitioning from prisons or jails back into the community. It is also a very complex system with many players from all levels of government to reentry organizations to local advocacy groups. The ACLU tells us that each year, 650,000 people nationwide return from prison to their communities. To support those who are returning, there are reentry programs and entire organization that offer help with things like housing, food, and health services. Others offer help with job training and legal support, among other things. These services are life-saving for thousands of people, people like Pedro. Pedro came back to the community last year after 20 years of imprisonment. Since the beginning of his return, he has been connected with a reentry organization in the city, which is where he still gets food on the daily. His case manager has secured him a bed in a shelter and also guided him to access state benefits and health care services. A vocational training has enabled him to get temporary jobs in construction. Pedro has his basic needs covered, and sometimes he even gets extra cash that allows him to luxuries like a nice dinner or a shopping adventure. He's thankful to be outside, but he feels overwhelmed by how much things have changed and how much he has to learn in, or in order to navigate his new life. For instance, He's learned that a lot of the socializing now happens digitally, and he's frustrated that he can't partake because he doesn't know how to use a smartphone or access the internet. He has met helping people during this reentry process, but he can help the feelings of shame, loneliness, and isolation. His family excluded him, and after two decades away, his friendships vanished. Overall, he's very grateful to have the support he has, but he, still he feels lost, alone, and sometimes even without purpose in life. In my research, I found that the most common reentry services are indeed fundamental to keep people alive, like in Pedro's case. However, I also found that there is a gap in the system when it comes to tending to the social emotional needs. And it turns out that those are what allow for healing, growth, and a sense of a fulfillment in life. Think about the hierarchy of needs of Maslow. Those top three levels, those are the ones that enable healing and post-traumatic growth, among other things. They are what help us build meaningful lives beyond survival and for the long term. My research also showed that self-expression through creativity and community building are rarely included in the breadth of services in, within the reentry system. They are seen as disposable and nice to have. However, what I've learned through research and also in my own life is that given the tools for self-expression in community, people can tend to those needs. And this is the specific problem that I'm addressing with this project. In short, the deprioritization and self-expression through creativity and community building in the reentry system. 
to address this problem, I got the honor to work with one of the unicorns in the system, the Fortune Society, which is a reentry organization that serves around 9,000 New Yorkers every year. They have a creative arts program that offers workshops in music, creative writing, acting, drawing, and more. My way into the organization was Jamie, the creative writing teacher who invited me to her class. The creative, oh, they are amazing. The creative writing class is a group of around 15 participants from diverse backgrounds and demographics, all of them impacted by the criminal legal system, and all of them now growing their, their writing skills. I came to the space wanting to learn about who they are, what they want, and most of all, how could I support them? I have been attending the class for over five months now, participating and actively listening and slowly becoming part of the community. I have also sent out surveys, conducted interviews and brainstorming sessions and other research activities. And based on what I've heard, what I've seen, these are my key learnings. First of all, that this class is a healing and a brave space and that art making is life affirming for all of them. Second, that they want to reach out to connect with more people and expand the community. And more broadly, to reach to the mainstream to create empathy and reduce the social stigma. Third, sharing their work with others is very important to them. And a lot of them, I mean, most of them want to be published. Based on these learnings and all the research, I asked myself, how can we build a structure that supports the desires of the group while also addressing the gap in the system? I proposed to my artist friends in the class to co-create an online platform to address all these, and they welcomed the idea with excitement. So I present to you Art Portal. Our portal is an art center platform co-created with and for people with justice system involvement that seeks A, to elevate their voices and artwork, B, raise awareness about the important role of art and community in the reentry and criminal legal systems, and C, help change the narrative about people with justice system involvement. Art Portal is a system composed of seven parts thus far. Among them, we have a resources element, which is a curated compilation of reentry and arts resources, and a part that is dedicated to introducing the program. We also have a publishing element, where every artist in the program will have some of their artwork published. For most, this will be their first portfolio, which they could use to submit their work to publications, competitions, and other things. In the future, we will have a financial support element that will allow artists to get monetary contributions for their work through donations and sales of their work. Down the line, we will also offer how-to guides and video tutorials to address the technology illiteracy challenge that is common for many people returning to the community, people like Pedro. And last but not least, I'm documenting this whole process of building the portal, and this documentation will live in the portal itself with the hope that it will serve as a tool for other groups and organizations to create their own art programs and their own art portals. To co-create the platform, we formed an advisory board composed of myself, Jamie, and other five volunteers. In our sessions, we have discussed things from the logotype to the audience and calls to actions, we propose, we discuss, we vote, and we agree the best ways to move forward. Weaved into our collaboration is the intention of making this process one of mutual learning and capability development. While I learn from their expertise and their lives, I also get to share an insight into the design universe, as well as guiding them into developing a sense of agency, confidence, responsibility, and leadership. I hope that they take pride and ownership of the platform and, became, and become advocates for their rollout. In working in this way, the process becomes an output itself. 
the totality of the intervention is both the tangible outputs and the process of creating them. In the coming months, we will keep working together to build the portal and all its supporting materials. The rollout of Art Portal at Fortune is a long, low hanging fruit since they already have the program and foundational structures in place. They just need to invest a few hundred dollars per year to upkeep the website and perhaps hire someone part time to keep the website up updated. Ideally, this would be one of the artists from the arts program. Having a tangible structure like these will almost serve as a business card to introduce and help raise awareness of the program and its benefits within and without the organization. The vision is that as a main player in the reentry system, Fortune has the opportunity to influence and inspire other organizations and even government to support and expand the program. My vision is that Art Portal will be a drop in the sea of the reentry system that makes big ripples. We start small and niche in the creative arts program and we work hard to make waves that touch other organization and that hits the whole reentry system at large. And at last, that reaches to the general public. The change that I and that we want to create starts by humanizing and valuing the individuals who have been impacted by the system. Art Portal is a tool that advocates for holistic re-entry services that foster growth and healing, not just survival. It advocates for programs, organizations, and systems that promote mutuality, opportunity, justice, and love. Imagine Pedro becoming a poet and going to slam contests cheer cheered by his fellow writers from the class. Imagine him being published and getting an income from the sales of his books. Imagine Pedro becoming a mentor for other individuals returning to the community after their incarceration. I say this is possible. Above all, my long-term aspiration is that this platform becomes a vehicle for individual and collective healing. I said at the beginning that I believe in something we say in the creative writing class all the time, that hurt people hurt people and that heal people heal people. And I hope that we can extend the healing powers of art and community to many more people impacted by the system and that those who are a little bit more healed, like my friends in the class, can become healers in their own worlds. Thank you so much.